What's up guys, welcome to Data Refinement. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the absolute worst way to resell. So please smash the like button if this content interests you. We'll see you inside. All right guys, the great resignation is here. And what that means is that a lot of people are quitting their normie jobs to find something more fulfilling, more interesting, and more exciting than just working 30 years for the same company and retiring when you're 60. So in today's video, I'm gonna actually go over three different ways to resell three different career paths. You tell me in the comment section below, what's the worst way to do it? Because a lot of people think on this channel, I only talk about one way of doing it. But if you're listening carefully, I talk about all the different ways to do it. You can pick your own story. So there's the zero to $100,000 per year, 100,000 to 250,000 per year, and the 250,000 plus category of reselling. All three of these revenue skills require totally different skills. And that's why today's video is actually sponsored by Skillshare. Regardless of what tier you pick, you have to be good at time management. And for me, the tool that I use is called Todoist. It's free. It's a free app. Essentially, what I use it for is to manage the tasks that I need to do. The most important part of the app, in my opinion, is that if you don't get it done that day because something came up, it automatically moves that task to the following day. I use Skillshare to really optimize this app for myself. And I'm going to go over a couple more classes that I recommend taking that will help you get to the level that you want. You know, reselling is a pick your own story type of challenge. So whatever you want, you can pick it with reselling. There is no actual right or wrong way to do it, but it's gonna be very obvious to you personally when you look at these, which one's gonna be the worst for you. All right, guys, so I'm gonna give you an example of how I used Skillshare. This specific class, which is Productivity Today, Managing Attention in Digital Age is with Kevin Sisker. And the skills that he talks about in this video are exactly what you need to be successful, regardless of which of these three tiers you pick. And this is improving your overall attention, honing your focus, decreasing your distractions, prioritizing the right tasks, and most important, the best for last, is creating a routine. So I learned how to use this app and how to integrate these really essential skills with Skillshare. So just remember guys, the people who use the link in the description below, the first 1,000 people get their first month free. The old way of working no longer works. And that is when you go out and every single day, you're looking for something different to do. That doesn't work because nobody in the real world in the job market does that. Nobody says, I'm gonna be a plumber one day and a firefighter the next day. As a reseller, the worst way to do it, in my opinion, is every single day look for something different. Different category, different shipping container, different storage system, different item specifics, different pricing, different return policy. That sounds like a nightmare to me. That sounds like the absolute worst way to resell. Even seasoned resellers who say, I can sell anything, they don't sell anything. They don't sell everything. They just sell a few things that are narrow in their niche. Whether it's vintage furniture, vintage electronics, maybe it's video games. Most people stay pretty close in their lane because it makes it a lot easier. If you just think about the fact how difficult it would be to have a totally different day every single day and how exhausting that would be, you might agree with me that it's the worst possible way to resell. But in the zero to 10 items per day, I think for most people listening right now, this is where you need to be. Uh, even though I like the 30 plus category more, in the zero to 10 category, essentially, you can go out and be very, very picky with your time. You can go out and spend probably 30 hours a week hunting the best possible items, go home, spend about an hour to two doing customer service, photography, shipping, listing. And I think that's really good and creative and a lot of people have a really solid store just listing five to 10 items a day, but they're very, very consistent and they have designated processes, designated areas for shipping, storage, listing, everything is organized and set up. In the five to 10 listings a day, all quality item, I define as over $30 and at least 50% profit. That's not a bad living. If you live somewhere where the cost of living is very reasonable, not California, but somewhere where you do 100,000 in revenue and 50,000 of it is profit and you're listing five to 10 items a day, that's probably a good way to do it. But honestly, if you are picking up anything and everything and thinking about items that are cheap or free and not thinking about what items sell for over $30, um, you're gonna get yourself into trouble if you pick up too much inventory. Most people I find, if they don't focus on $30 and over, they end up with way too much stuff in their garage. 
huge death piles or even death houses where the entire house is full of stuff that's not listed. I definitely recommend a more sniper approach where you go out, just find the best possible items. And for most people working at home with very low overhead doing it themselves, five to 10 a day, $100,000 gross, $50,000 profit, you're in a really good place. So in my Facebook group, we actually have three different level calls. One is 100,000, one is 250,000, and one is $2 million and more. And I can tell you the people who are between the 100 and $250,000 a year, they already know how to resell, or at least they have a pretty good knowledge of how the whole system works. What they lack or what they're working on is actually consistency. Uh, that's why we always talk about the draft bank, which is making sure that you have listings to launch, even on days when you're not able to list, let's say a family emergency or you wanna go on vacation. Being ahead of the game where you have extra listings because you planned ahead will help you along those turbulent times as a reseller. For me, I always picked a minimum listing goal. So let's say 10 a day, I would have extra in my draft bank. And if sales are a little bit slower, maybe that day you launch 13. Um, you launch at least 10 every single day on a day where maybe sales are a little bit slower, maybe do a bigger discount or maybe launch a few more listings. You have some more options. So the 10 to, 20, the 10 to 30 area, I think is a really safe place to be as a reseller. And the main thing is that you plan ahead, you have consistency, you have a draft bank. I've never heard of anybody accidentally listing 30 items. That's not what it looks like. Usually 30 items a day means that you have a routine. You wake up, There's there was Ben in the group this morning that actually said that within five minutes of waking up, he's taking photos. So he wakes up, uses the bathroom, gets a glass of water, gets his camera, starts taking photos within five minutes of waking up. And he's been doing that for several years now. So that routine helped him get to a comfortable 10 to 30 per day. 10 to 30 per day, you can definitely still do in your garage, in your spare bedroom, in the backyard, in a barn. You don't have to have any fancy equipment. You don't need to answer to nobody. You can just do whatever you want every single day. I always recommend 10 to 30 because you don't want to live paycheck to paycheck, especially when you're working for yourself. You want a little bit of a buffer. I recommend at least one year of savings because when you're a reseller, a couple of things happen. One, you don't make a fixed amount of money. Every single day, you make a different amount depending on what you sell, what you find. It's going to fluctuate a little bit, so it's good to have a little extra savings. Also, as a reseller, once or twice a year, there's going to be some amazing deal that you want to take advantage of. And it really hurts when you don't have, it, you don't have enough capital to buy this super good deal and somebody else gets it right from under you. So that is a really painful experience. It sort of encouraged me to be frugal and to really take my time when making purchases to just try to find the very best items to sell because I want to be in a position where when a good opportunity comes up, I'm able to capitalize on it. And I think that's really important because great opportunities don't come along every single day. Okay, now this is where I think a lot of people might say this is the worst way to do it, but hear me out here. So this is the 30 listings or more club. Um, 30 listings or more, most people are netting six figures. So they're earning a professional level income, which is the same as like doctor, lawyer, surgeon. Some people in the group are making over $100 an hour. And essentially that becomes a result of being an expert in your category. So whatever category you pick from video games to media, to clothing, uh, to tchotchkes, whatever category you're in, if you are an expert, what happens is you know exactly where to find these items. So wherever the sourcing is at, wherever these widgets live, you know where to find them. Secondly, you know how to get a deal on them or to buy them at a price where it's actually profitable. So you understand all the margins. If I buy this amount, I can sell at that amount. If I buy bulk, I can get them for this amount. If I buy one at a time, this amount. Being an expert allows you to figure out what your buy cost is, where they come from, how to get discounts. You also know exactly how to write the title, how to take the photos, how to do the item specifics, how to do the pricing. You're gonna know exactly how to do it every single time. You're gonna know exactly how long it takes. You can tell your wife, you know what? I'm gonna be ready in three hours and 13 minutes because that's how long my eBay day takes. You know how to put things away. You know how the traffic affects uh, like how you adjust the, the listing and how it affects the, the, the traffic. So you might be able to say, at 8% promoted listings, I get this much traffic. At 10% promoted listings, I don't get any more traffic. That's why I use 8%. You really are dialed into your process, how to get it, how to sell it, how to rank it. You understand all the different players in your category. You understand the competition. And I feel like personally, this is the best place to be because a lot of people say, well, what if your category ends up breaking? then you're screwed. 
I, I don't I don't agree with that. I actually lost the platform that I was selling on. I was on eBay. I was doing millions of dollars a year and lost my account. And it really didn't affect my income that much because the skill that you get from being an expert can be transferred to another platform. I'm pretty confident that my sales skills can transfer to pretty much anything because at this point in my career, the 30 plus mindset is no shortcuts, do everything right the first time. I don't have time to do it wrong, so let me take the time to learn how to do it right. Let me go slowly, let me not borrow any money. And it sounds crazy, right? I built this entire thing, just reinvesting money starting at zero, not taking any loans, I have no credit card debt. And I feel like in the beginning of my career, in my early 20s, I was always thinking of shortcuts, ways to do it quicker, borrowing money, loans. I feel like that is not the proper way to do it because the 30 and over is something you graduate to not something that you start at. You can't start as an expert. You can't go to a job and say, I wanna start at high management. They're gonna say, get out of town. That's not how it works. You gotta start at entry level, work your way up to mid, then work your way up to high management. Maybe one day after you understand the whole cycle, you can now become owner and that makes sense because you've been doing it for a while. You understand every single level of the company. You wanna be the owner. You know how to put all the pieces together, go for it. And I think that the zero to 100 might be the most comfortable way because there's a lot less to think about when you have five or 10 listings per day. Then if you're doing over 30, there's a lot of moving parts. It's pretty time consuming to be honest. So when you're doing over 30 items a day, it becomes work-life integration. There's not really work-life balance. Like um, I'm about to have a baby next month and I actually get two, uh, I get two months of paid uh, family leave from the state of California. So I work as a W-2 employee for my own company. And because I set up my company that way, I actually get paid vacation from California, which is kind of mind blowing to me. But is it really paid vacation when you work for yourself? Because my employees still need work. It's not like I can shut it down and nobody comes to work the next couple of days. It's like, it still goes even if I'm not here. So part of my brain, part of my mental RAM is still on for your business. And I think that if you choose 30 plus, if you choose that route, yes, you'll have six figures in the bank, but you'll also have a little bit more mental real estate taken up. So I asked my colleague Tekken Sports, like for you, um, how many tabs are open in your brain, right? If your brain was a browser, he's like, well, every single thing that earns money is a different tab. All my family is a different tab. All my health, my everything is a different tab. There's probably hundreds or thousands of tabs open. So of course, when you're managing that much stuff, there's more tabs open. But from what I have seen, the more tabs that you can manage, usually the happier you are because you're serving more people. Each one of those tabs is serving somebody. And I think that a lot of people forget that impact is really important on the happiness of your life. So I'm creating this channel right now to help people pick this new creative path that they want to do, work for yourself, create your own parameters, live your life the way that you want to. Um, and I think that you really have to focus on skill development. I wish that earlier in my career, I focused on taxes, look, focused on how to take good photos, focused on uh, how to do marketing, how to do how entrepreneurship's how, is is set up like how learning accounting learning how to do a, a profit and loss statement learning how to do a balance sheet learning how to balance a checkbook learning which credit card is best for your business it's kind of funny because after all that and learning all the hacks i ended up just using a bank account and one credit card like that's not fancy one credit card one bank account charge everything on my credit card to the one card i can just hand that to a cpa and they know exactly what to do because all the money from my resale business goes into that bank account that credit card has all the expenses that go out of the bank account. And I know this is an oversimplification, but what's left is what I pay tax on. So learning these skills is really important. I highly recommend Skillshare. If you check out the link below, you actually get your first one month free and that applies to the first 1,000 people who click the link. So I appreciate you guys. We'll see you on the next episode.